So in just a minute, we're going to turn on the water and we're going to watch it go down the sedimentary trough and you're going to see how it's going to separate. The cistern collects our rainwater and we have a science lab actually upstairs and the pipe it collects from the rooftop and it goes through a clear pipe that is exposed in the science lab so when it rains the kids can see it collecting. There's a piping system that is run into the sedimentary trough and you're able to uh, manipulate the water level that goes through the sedimentary trough. What you is still see, staying there? Uh, the rocks. rocks. The, well, some of the rocks, the tiny ones. The are tiny moving. ones, right? So it's a really uh, complete lesson, not only for mixtures and solutions, but then particle size and uh, gravity and the movement of sediments. There's so many lessons. I forgot what the word super tiny in the science My. is. Microscopic. <laughs> there you go. This was the huge piece today, being able to get them out here and being able to use this uh, because it demonstrates it so perfectly. These are my fifth grade students. He's drawing water on the pond. And we're out here today to draw some of our beautiful nature that's provided here at Marshall Elementary. You can draw fish. Woo! Yeah. They're looking at natural lines. I'm trying to figure out what I think. Looking at the lines in the water. Line created by the movement of the water. Lines created by the different plants that we've planted around our pond. And the tree, and even the man-made elements of the fence and the wall. The beauty of Marshall is having the ability to get outside, to use the outdoor classroom to be able to see nature and the beautiful building. I mean, the lines and the way the different materials are used make even the building a fascinating thing to look back at and draw. All right, friends. We were out here this morning going on a nature walk, and what we were doing was, um, right now in kindergarten, we're studying our five senses. I saw a dragon fly. So we want to give the kids an idea of, of all the senses that they use when they go outside. I'm using a sense right now. When you're walking over on the gravel. Ooh, I am too. Which sense? Hearing. 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 Good job, friends. They were really discovering things that they could use all their senses for. Oh, oh my goodness. That leaf was twirling around Did you hear it? Around. Did you hear it when it fell? Yeah. In my ear. You heard we it. split our classrooms up into smaller groups. Turn to your partners in your group. And what they do when they're working in the smaller groups is they learn to collaborate with each other and they learn to uh, help to teach each other and help to get information from each other. Tell each other one thing that you've heard since we came outside. I heard a cricket. I had a tree moving. They're learning how to work together. They're learning how to communicate. They're learning how to show mutual respect to each other. Oh, did you hear that? A bird. Not only is the building itself a teaching tool, but the grounds around the building are designed so we can also use them as teaching tools. So much of our curriculum takes place in what we consider our outdoor classroom. We use our nature trail in the back of the school. We use all the grounds surrounding our school. And it's something that our kids expect us to use because it's what we're all about. We're a green school. And our expectation is to treat our earth the way we want to be treated. And everything we do focuses on our earth and it comes back to us what we're doing in the classroom. All right, here we go. Busting loose the dam. So you will always find us out in the grounds around our school as much as we are in the building. These are our outdoor classrooms and we take advantage of that. <laughs>